Apart from conductivity, it's also very important that the particle concentration is within the measurement range from 10,000 to 5 million total particles per milliliter. This overnight culture is probably something like 1,000 million per milliliter, which is way too concentrated for the back-to-box, so it must be diluted prior to any measurements. The dynamic range of the back-to-box can handle jumps in steps of 1 to 100 dilutions instead of the 1 to 10 dilutions that we traditionally use in microbiology. Now, if we do a 1 to 100 dilution, the conductivity should be okay, but the sample will still have too high total particle concentration. Instead, a 1 to 10,000 dilution should get the sample within the back-to-box measurement range. To do a 1 to 100 dilution, you can simply add 101 microliter of sample to the 10 ml diluent in the tube. This is almost the same as 9.9 .9 plus 0.1, but it's much faster to do because you only need one pipette. Ideally, we want to measure single cell suspensions and therefore we need to homogenize the sample. E. coli is relatively easy to homogenize and I do this by vortexing 5 ml of culture with 3 mm glass beads that have already been added to this tube. I do the vortexing for 30 seconds to homogenize. After the sample has been homogenized, I make the 1 to 100 dilution by adding 101 microliter to the 10 ml of diluent in the tube. Here we go. And then I vortex again, this time for 10 seconds. As I showed you on the previous illustration, the 1 to 10,000 dilution is made by doing a 1 to 100 dilution of the 1 to 100 sample. And now I vortex again, this time for 10 seconds. The sample is now ready for analysis on the back to box. Place the 1 to 10,000 sample in the rack, transfer the tubing kit, and click measure. The initial phase of the measurement is the starting out phase. Here the pump is filling the system and the system checks if the sample has the correct conductivity and if the flow is okay. Once startup is complete, the actual measurement starts and the display will show the result once sufficient bacteria have been counted. Now the measurement is done and the system is being emptied. The display shows that the intact cell concentration is 120,000 intact cells per ml. When multiplied with the dilution factor, this corresponds to 1.2 billion intact cells per ml. Note that the intact cell concentration is reported as a subset of the total particle concentration. If you're following something like a growth curve, the ratio between intact cells and total particles can be a good life debt indicator. For the 1 to 10,000 dilution, the measurement time was 92 seconds. Remember to note down at least the measurement ID, dilution factor and sample description. You'll need this information later when analyzing data in the summary.csv file extracted via the USB port. If you want to do comparisons when in the lab, it's also quite convenient to note down the intact cell concentration and total particle concentration. The measurement that we just did used the full measurement time because the concentration of bacteria was relatively low. This is completely fine and you can trust the result, but it can be a bit tedious to have to wait for the result. Let's see what happens if we prepare a 1 to 1000 dilution instead. To do a 1 to 1000 dilution, I first remove 1 ml of the diluent, so I only have 9 ml in the tube. Then I vortex the 1 to 100 tube briefly to resuspend cells, and then I transfer 1 ml of this sample to the 9 ml of diluent. That gives me the 1 to 1000 dilution. Finally, I vortex this sample for 10 seconds.
We're not doing a clean in between because the carryover is negligible when moving to a higher concentration of bacteria. So simply transfer the tubing kit and press measure. For the 1 to 1000 dilution, the measurement time was 37 seconds. This measurement took much shorter time and the total particle concentration is still within the 5 million total particle limit. There are three best practice considerations I'd like to highlight at this point. The first take home message is that I always work from low to high bacterial concentrations. This way the risk of overloading and clogging is greatly reduced. When you know your cultures better, it's easier to hit a good dilution from the start and get fast results. In this example with the E. coli overnight culture, the 1 to 1000 dilution is spot on. The second consideration is that you should finalize measurements for a given dilution series within 15 minutes. Typically, the diluent has less salt than the growth medium, which means that cells can swell and become more fragile. Another advantage of working swiftly with the dilution series is that we minimize bacterial growth, which could otherwise offset the bacterial concentration. The third reflection is that if you want technical replicates, you should never click measure on the same vial twice. It's much better to go back to the primary sample and repeat the dilutions. In my example, this would be the shake flask. This approach gives a more reliable result because it also includes the variation involved with pipetting and vortexing. That was the essential information on the sample preparation and measurements.